Good morning, folks. We've got geomagnetic storms, news on Earth's magnetism, Rosetta's comet, and a kink in black hole science. We begin with the last 24 hours on our star over at spaceweathernews.com. When watching 193 angstroms, a slow coronal expansion occurs at the left side as a piece of filament releases. You can see its effects on the coronal plasma. Otherwise, there have been no eruptions and no solar flares. The lone sunspot on the Earth-facing half is small, not appearing to develop, and has twin negative umbra with a tight positive trailing plague. When we come to the solar wind, we find the speed indeed continued to rise yesterday, cracking the 700 kilometers per second mark, and when the geomagnetic storm kicked in. Once again, the Disaster Prediction app was the first to send a notification across the world, two minutes before NOAA's warning issuance, and ten minutes before NASA's top solar physicist alert. Interestingly, we had plasma penetration over Europe during that time which far exceeded expectations given the low level of solar effects just a level 1 storm. That's a big penetration. Solar wind hitting us now is from the departing corona hole on the right. Next one incoming from the left not only represents twin openings in close proximity, but while the lead is positive, the trailing opening is the lone negative extension up from the south pole. We've been under vast but moderate influence only from the northern system, but in the last 12 hours the IMF from the second corona hole finally began interacting with our planet. Might need the whole rest of the day to take the entire connection. Of course that brings up the forecasted end to the earthquake drought, scary amount of pressure that's been building over weeks, and this is what the Blood Echo wind map looked like around 6 a.m. Eastern Time. It updates throughout the day, so be sure to check out quakewatch.net to stay informed. Top news begins with the ESA. Swarm mission has created a new crustal magnetic anomalies map and it shows the striped sea floor caused by previous magnetic reversals. It shows both positive and negative anomalies. And while there isn't much that meets the eye first glance in terms of fault areas and earthquakes, the USA is unquestionably the most magnetic area of the world, including the polar zones, with a peak just west of Atlanta, and the Titanic anomalies surrounding it represent the major tornado zone in the United States. Almost certainly not a coincidence. Up next, we're sticking with the ESA because close examination of the sequences of photos taken over the months of science collection at 67P reveals that one of the outbursting events was caused by a collapsing cliff. It revealed bright ices and contributed to the coma expansion via the solar wind interaction with those pristine rocks. Last but not least, my neighbors to the north in Los Alamos have attempted to work through the paradigm-crushing fact that what the mainstream calls black holes can grow to sizes that don't make any sense in black hole science. Turns out, they got one of their supercomputers to come pretty close, but to do it they had to funnel the plasma in on a line as opposed to an orbiting, accretion disk, and spaghettification. Notable that this is how such structures form in electric universe theories, not mainstream. Top weather worries today begin down under. Sydney got whacked a few hours ago, and it appears there's more coming across different areas of Australia, with the east and west coastal regions set to take the worst of it with those lows drawing off oceanic energy. We also need to note that low over the UK. By the time its convergence swings to France in a few hours, it will be strong enough to bring Mediterranean energy up onto land. We've got the rest of the pressure and radar forecast coming up. We'll go through the atmosphere and then see shots of our star to close. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.